but first with a team that I, I believe is not doing what we thought they would do. And that is the Philadelphia 76ers who so far are winless on this season. They are 0 three having been beaten by the San Antonio Spurs. And we'll get to all that, but a very slow start indeed for this team, Evan, how concerned are you? I'm not really concerned considering the two losses that they came up against. Granted, yesterday, playing versus Spurs, you don't ever want to lose to a team that's perceived to be worse than you. But offensively, in a game where, you know, offense matters in general, they're really kicking it up. And I think if they do something to uh, at least attempt to play a little bit of defense, I think they'll go on a run. (laughs) Attempt to play a little bit of defense, Eddie. (laughs) Well, I'm with Evan. You know, they lost to what might be the two best teams in the league to start the season. It's tough to get that schedule. Uh, you, you see James is averaging 26 points a game, nine assists. Joel averaging 27. He just dropped 40. Uh, you even have Tyrese Maxey averaging 20 points a game. They're going to get buckets. Their offense is a little stagnant, but it's just going to be with James. You got to worry about their defense. I, I thought the defense would be an issue when the playoffs come because they just have – Lineups that feature a ton of guys who aren't great at the point of attack. James, Maxi, Tobias, even George Niang off the bench. But yeah, it's 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 looked bad so far. But look, they're gonna win a lot of games this season. They'll be fine in that sense. And maybe they can sure up that defense by the playoffs. Yeah, and I, I'm curious what what ET thinks about this, but just the hierarchy, I'm curious is just monitoring from James Harden, Joel Embiid. They're both obviously Joel Embiid had a big last game, 40 points plus but he's still coming back from conditioning he dealt with plantar fasciitis in the summer so he's kind of coming into the year a little step behind but James Harden is playing well you have Tyrese Maxey Tobias Harris both guys that have been you know Tobias Harris was the number two option throughout last season so he's taken a little bit of a role change and uh, and and you know Tyrese Maxey has a lot of potential to be the number two guy on this team as well so I'm curious how the hierarchy plays out in Philly I think the hierarchy has to show up you know, and not make any excuses. At the end of the day, they don't have a luxury of a bench. We can make excuses for, you know, them trying to get figured out and rolling, but I'm not necessarily trusting a bench of Harold, Niang, or even, you know, uh, uh, DeAndre Melton. So I think right now the big dogs really have to show up and perform the whole year, earn their check, and, uh, you know, have to do it by committee. They have a strong five or six that can really make sure that, you know, things occur where they can go on runs, but they have to stay healthy and, you know, really be accountable. You know, PJ Tucker uh, yesterday taking sort of that leadership role, voicing the frustration, being very vocal about it, Doc already having to address a lot of questions that are probably not fun to answer. So what is the next step? What happens? How do they get this thing back on track, Eddie? Well, it is about defense. It is about effort that lands squarely on those guys' shoulders. Somebody like PJ Tucker's shoulders. You know, the, the Celtics were not running from him when they played him. The Bucks were not running from him when they played him. Now you run that risk. You sign him at that age at that contract, and you give him a player option at the end of that contract as well. You're putting a lot on his shoulders. Uh, I, I think Shams mentioned it, and I this is going to come up as well. We got to worry about Joel Embiid's conditioning. He's got to be the anchor of their defense in so many different ways. He's got to cover up so many of the warts they have on that perimeter. Uh, so it's going to start there. It's just about, you know, them locking in, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, the schedule will get easier. We'll see them beat up on some bad teams, and we'll see, you know, another a 40-point game from James pretty soon, and it'll be all sunny out there. Look, the the Eagles are 6-0. and the, the Phillies in the World Series – they're lucky right go. now. They're, they're not going to feel the wrath just yet. They got time. And, uh, but by the time that World Series is over, they might want to. They might want to be ready. I, I would think someone who's probably happy that there's a lot going on in Philly sports right now is Doc Rivers because it feels like a tale as old as time. You know, Doc Rivers hot seat talk. It starts at some point almost every single season. Is, is there anything that we need to worry about? Is there anything that Doc needs to worry about? I suppose we're fine. But Shams, do you hear anything? Is it too early in the season to even be thinking about those kind of talks? I, I do think it's a little early in the year. They, there's a lot of, of power that Doc Rivers has in Philadelphia. When you look at a roster perspective, he's very involved throughout the organization, um, you know, throughout the offseason. He had he he led a lot of the meetings with Joel Embiid, with James Harden, when they were trying to get James Harden and his role defined in the offseason before he took a pay cut. Doc Rivers was right there in, in all those meetings. And so I think th- there's going to be a leash here this season for them to see how this year goes and 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 really see how this team can can gain a chemistry because this is really their first year, full year together. So I do think they'll they'll give Doc Rivers every opportunity. 
Uh, but listen, if this team struggles and it's the midway point of the year, we know how Philadelphia is. Uh, so it will be curious to monitor. Yeah, I agree with Shums. Um, I, I don't think Doc should be nervous. I think even if he does get fired, isn't he already in the Hall of Fame? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, 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 so is he really tripping? But I think at the same time, in the same way, you have to really weigh the pros and cons on where would you go from here. And you have to really be honest with the franchise because everybody keeps putting these championship aspirations, but they haven't made it past the second round since the rebuild. So I think sometimes the fans have to dig deep in and really, and really look in, in and see a way to pros and the cons on what the truth is. Yeah, that process a, seems to have it. Go ahead. I was going to say, Doc is in a tough spot. When you have James, your offense is going to be the James offense for long points of the game. Uh, I know they had that dribbling stat the other day. That's probably kind of typical. You can have a lead guard like that. But look, it's going to be a lot of high pick and roll. It's going to be a lot of guys having to be stagnant in the corners and, and on the weak side. And that's not necessarily Doc's fault. That's just kind of the the situation they put themselves in. Um, I think he'll be fine at least until the All-Star break, but we'll see. Uh, Shams must be getting some really hot breaking news just had to, had to duck out he'll be back i'm sure at some point and i can't wait to hear what that phone call is about but